Astronomical seeing refers to the amount of apparent blurring and twinkling of astronomical objects like stars due to turbulent mixing in the atmosphere of Earth, causing variations of the optical refractive index. The seeing conditions on a given night at a given location describe how much Earth's atmosphere perturbs the images of stars as seen through a telescope. The most common seeing measurement is the full width at half maximum FWHM of the optical intensity across the seeing disk the point spread function for imaging through the atmosphere. The FWHM of the point spread function loosely called seeing disk diameter or seeing is the best possible angular resolution that can be achieved by an optical telescope in a long exposure image, and corresponds to the FWHM of the fuzzy blob seen when observing a point-like source such as a star through the atmosphere. The size of the seeing disk is determined by the seeing conditions at the time of the observation. The best conditions give a seeing disk diameter of approximately 0.4 arcseconds and are found at high altitude observatories on small islands such as Mauna Kea or La Palma. Seeing is one of the biggest problems for Earth based astronomy. While large telescopes have theoretically milli arcsecond resolution, the real image is limited to the average seeing disk during the observation. This can easily mean a factor of 100 between the potential and practical resolution. Starting in the 1990s, new adaptive optics have been introduced that can help correct for these effects, dramatically improving the resolution of ground-based telescopes. <laughs> <laughs> effects Astronomical seeing has several effects. It causes the images of point sources such as stars, which in the absence of atmospheric turbulence would be steady airy patterns produced by diffraction, to break up into speckle patterns, which change very rapidly with time the resulting speckled images can be processed using speckle imaging. Long exposure images of these changing speckle patterns result in a blurred image of the point source, called a seeing disk. The brightness of stars appears to fluctuate in a process known as scintillation or twinkling. Atmospheric seeing causes the fringes in an astronomical interferometer to move rapidly. The distribution of atmospheric seeing through the atmosphere, the CN2 profile described below, causes the image quality in adaptive optic systems to degrade the further you look from the location of reference star effects of atmospheric seeing were indirectly responsible for the belief that there were canals on Mars. In viewing a bright object such as Mars, occasionally a still patch of air will come in front of the planet, resulting in a brief moment of clarity. Before the use of charge-coupled devices, there was no way of recording the image of the planet in the brief moment other than having the observer remember the image and draw it later. This had the effect of having the image of the planet be dependent on the observer's memory and preconceptions which led the belief that Mars had linear features. The effects of atmospheric seeing are qualitatively similar throughout the visible and near-infrared wavebands. At large telescopes the long exposure image resolution is generally slightly higher at longer wavelengths, and the timescale for the changes in the dancing speckle patterns is substantially lower. Measures <laughs> <laughs> There are three common descriptions of the astronomical seeing conditions at an observatory. The full width at half maximum FWHM of the seeing disk. R0, the size of a typical lump of uniform air within the turbulent atmosphere, and T0, the time scale over which the changes in the turbulence become significant. The CN2 profile these are described in the subsections below. Topic: The full width at half maximum (FWHM) of the seeing disk. Without an atmosphere, a small star would have an apparent size, an airy disk, in a telescope image determined by diffraction, and would be inversely proportional to the diameter of the telescope. However, when light enters the Earth's atmosphere, the different temperature layers and different wind speeds distort the light waves, leading to distortions in the image of a star. The effects of the atmosphere can be modeled as rotating cells of air moving turbulently. At most observatories, the turbulence is only significant on scales larger than R0 see below, 
the seeing parameter R0 is 10 to 20 cm at visible wavelengths under the best conditions and this limits the resolution of telescopes to be about the same as given by a space-based 10 to 20 cm telescope. The distortion changes at a high rate, typically more frequently than 100 times a second. In a typical astronomical image of a star with an exposure time of seconds or even minutes, the different distortions average out as a filled disk called the point spread function or seeing disk. The diameter of the seeing disk, most often defined as the full width at half maximum FWHM, is a measure of the astronomical seeing conditions. It follows from this definition that seeing is always a variable quantity, different from place to place, from night to night, and even variable on a scale of minutes. Astronomers often talk about good nights with a low average seeing disk diameter, and bad nights where the seeing diameter was so high that all observations were worthless. The FWHM of the seeing disk or just seeing is usually measured in arcseconds, abbreviated with the symbol. A 1.0 seeing is a good one for average astronomical sites. The seeing of an urban environment is usually much worse. Good seeing nights tend to be clear, cold nights without wind gusts. Warm air rises convection, degrading the seeing, as do wind and clouds. At the best high-altitude mountaintop observatories, the wind brings in stable air which has not previously been in contact with the ground, sometimes providing seeing as good as 0.4. <laughs> Topic. R0 and T0 The astronomical seeing conditions at an observatory can be conveniently described by the parameters R0 and T0. For telescopes with diameters smaller than R0, the resolution of long exposure images is determined primarily by diffraction and the size of the airy pattern and thus is inversely proportional to the telescope diameter. For telescopes with diameters larger than R0, the image resolution is determined primarily by the atmosphere and is independent of telescope diameter, remaining constant at the value given by a telescope of diameter equal to R0. R0 also corresponds to the length scale over which the turbulence becomes significant, 10 to 20 cm at visible wavelengths at good observatories, and T0 corresponds to the time scale over which the changes in the turbulence become significant. R0 determines the spacing of the actuators needed in an adaptive optics system, and T0 determines the correction speed required to compensate for the effects of the atmosphere. The parameters R0 and T0 vary with the wavelength used for the astronomical imaging, allowing slightly higher resolution imaging at longer wavelengths using large telescopes. The seeing parameter R0 is often known as the fried parameter pronounced freed" named after David L. Fried. The atmospheric time constant T0 is often referred to as the Greenwood time constant, after Darrell Greenwood. Mathematical description of R0 and T0 Mathematical models can give an accurate model of the effects of astronomical seeing on images taken through ground-based telescopes. Three simulated short exposure images are shown at the right through three different telescope diameters as negative images to highlight the fainter features more clearly a common astronomical convention. The telescope diameters are quoted in terms of the fried parameter R 0 display style R underscore 0 defined below R 0 Display style r underscore zero is a commonly used measurement of the astronomical seeing at observatories. At visible wavelengths, r zero display style r underscore zero varies from 20 centimeters at the best locations to 5 centimeters at typical sea level sites. In reality, the pattern of blobs speckles in the images changes very rapidly, so that long exposure photographs would just show a single large blurred blob in the center for each telescope diameter. The diameter FWHM of the large blurred blob in long exposure images is called the seeing disk diameter, and is independent of the telescope diameter used as long as adaptive optics correction is not applied. 
It is first useful to give a brief overview of the basic theory of optical propagation through the atmosphere. In the standard classical theory, light is treated as an oscillation in a field ψ for monochromatic plane waves arriving from a distant point source with wave vector k display style math bf k psi 0 r t equals a u e i phi u plus 2 pi New T plus K R display style psi underscore zero left math bf r t right equals a underscore u e caret i left phi underscore u plus two pi new T plus math bf k c d o t math bf r right where psi zero display style psi underscore zero is the complex field at position R display style math bf R and time t display style t with real and imaginary parts corresponding to the electric and magnetic field components phi u display style phi underscore u represents a phase offset new Display style new is the frequency of the light determined by new equals c k two pi display style new equals c left math bf k right left two pi right and a u display style a underscore u is the amplitude of the light. The photon flux in this case is proportional to the square of the amplitude a u display style a underscore u, and the optical phase corresponds to the complex argument of psi zero display style psi underscore zero. As wave fronts pass through the Earth's atmosphere, they may be perturbed by refractive index variations in the atmosphere. The diagram at the top right of this page shows schematically a turbulent layer in the Earth's atmosphere perturbing planar wavefronts before they enter a telescope. The perturbed wavefront psi p may be related at any given instant to the original planar wavefront psi 0 r Display style psi underscore zero left math bf r right. In the following way, psi p r equals chi a r e i phi a r psi zero r Display style psi underscore p left math bf r right equals left chi underscore r left math bf r right e caret i phi underscore r left math bf r right right psi underscore zero left math bf r right where chi a r display style chi underscore r left math bf r right Represents the fractional change in wavefront amplitude and phi a r display style phi underscore r left math bf r right is the change in wavefront phase introduced by the atmosphere. It is important to emphasize that chi a r display style chi underscore r left math bf r right and Phi a r display style phi underscore left math bf r right 
describe the effect of the Earth's atmosphere, and the timescales for any changes in these functions will be set by the speed of refractive index fluctuations in the atmosphere. The Kolmogorov model of turbulence A description of the nature of the wavefront perturbations introduced by the atmosphere is provided by the Kolmogorov model developed by Tatarsky, based partly on the studies of turbulence by the Russian mathematician Andrei Kolmogorov. This model is supported by a variety of experimental measurements and is widely used in simulations of astronomical imaging. The model assumes that the Wavefront perturbations are brought about by variations in the refractive index of the atmosphere. These refractive index variations lead directly to phase fluctuations described by phi a r display style phi underscore r left math bf r right. But any amplitude fluctuations are only brought about as a second-order effect while the perturbed wavefronts propagate from the perturbing atmospheric layer to the telescope. For all reasonable models of the Earth's atmosphere at optical and infrared wavelengths the instantaneous imaging performance is dominated by the phase fluctuations phi a r display style phi underscore r left math bf r right the amplitude fluctuations described by chi a r display style chi underscore a left math bf r right have negligible effect on the structure of the images seen in the focus of a large telescope. For simplicity, the phase fluctuations in Tatashi's model are often assumed to have a Gaussian random distribution with the following second-order structure function. D phi a rho equals phi a r minus phi a r plus rho two r Display style d underscore phi underscore r left math bf rho right equals left langle left phi underscore r left math bf r right phi underscore r left math bf r plus math bf rho right right carrot two right wrangle underscore math bf r where d phi rho Display style d underscore phi underscore r left math bf rho right is the atmospherically induced variance between the phase at two parts of the wavefront separated by a distance rho display style math bf rho in the aperture plane and greater than display style greater than represents the ensemble average. For the Gaussian random approximation, the structure function of Tatarsky can be described in terms of a single parameter r0 display style r underscore 0 d phi r rho equals 6.88 rho r0 5 thirds display style d underscore phi underscore r left math bf rho right equals 6.88 left frac left math bf rho right r underscore 0 right carrot 5 thirds r0 display style R underscore zero indicates the strength of the phase fluctuations as it corresponds to the diameter of a circular telescope aperture at which atmospheric phase perturbations begin to seriously limit the image resolution. Typical R zero display style R underscore zero values for I band nine hundred nanometers wavelength observations at good sites are twenty to forty centimeters. It should be noted that R zero Display style r underscore zero also corresponds to the aperture diameter for which the variance sigma two display style sigma caret two of the wavefront phase averaged over the aperture comes approximately to unity sigma two equals one point zero two nine nine d r Zero five three 
Display style sigma carrot two equals one point zero two nine nine left frac D R underscore zero right carrot five thirds. This equation represents a commonly used definition for R zero display style R underscore zero a parameter frequently used to describe the atmospheric conditions at astronomical observatories R zero display style R underscore zero can be determined from a measured CN two profile described below as follows R zero equals sixteen seven lambda minus two cos gamma minus one zero infinity D H C N two H minus three five Display style R underscore zero equals left sixteen point seven Lambda carrot minus two cos gamma carrot minus one int underscore zero carrot inf T DHC underscore N carrot two H right carrot minus three fifths where the turbulence strength C N two H Display style C underscore N carrot two H varies as a function of height h display style h above the telescope and gamma display style gamma is the angular distance of the astronomical source from the zenith from directly overhead if turbulent evolution is assumed to occur on slow time scales then the time scale t0 is simply proportional to r0 divided by the mean wind speed the refractive index fluctuations caused by Gaussian random turbulence can be simulated using the following algorithm. Phi A R equals Re F T R K K K Display style phi underscore a math bf r equals m box re m box f t r math bf k k math bf k, where phi a r display style phi underscore a math bf r is the optical phase error introduced by atmospheric turbulence. R K is a two-dimensional square array of independent random complex numbers which have a Gaussian distribution about zero and white noise spectrum. K K is the real Fourier amplitude expected from the Kolmogorov or von Kármán spectrum. Re represents taking the real part, and F T represents a discrete Fourier transform of the resulting two-dimensional square array, typically an F F T. Topic. Turbulent intermittency The assumption that the phase fluctuations in Tatashi's model have a Gaussian random distribution is usually unrealistic. In reality, turbulence exhibits intermittency. These fluctuations in the turbulence strength can be straightforwardly simulated as follows Phi A R equals Re F T R K I K K K Display style Phi underscore a math BF R equals M box re M box F T R Math BF K O times I Math BF K K Math BF K where I K is a two dimensional array which represents the spectrum of intermittency, with the same dimensions as R K, and where Display style O times represents convolution. The intermittency is described in terms of fluctuations in the turbulence strength C N two display style C underscore N carrot two. It can be seen that the equation for the Gaussian random case above is just the special case from this equation with I K equals Delta K 
Display style I K equals delta K where delta Display style delta is the Dirac delta function. Topic the C N two Display style C underscore N carrot two profile a more thorough description of the astronomical seeing at an observatory is given by producing a profile of the turbulence strength as a function of altitude, called a c n 2 profile c n 2 Profiles are generally performed when deciding on the type of adaptive optics system which will be needed at a particular telescope, or in deciding whether or not a particular location would be a good site for setting up a new astronomical observatory. Typically, several methods are used simultaneously for measuring the c n 2 profile and then compared. Some of the most common methods include SCIDAR imaging the shadow patterns in the scintillation of starlight LOLAS a small aperture variant of SCIDAR designed for low altitude profiling SLODAR MASS MUSHI 11 channel lunar scintillometer for ground level profiling radar mapping of turbulence Balloon borne thermometers to measure how quickly the air temperature is fluctuating with time due to turbulence. V2 Precision Data Collection Hub (PDCH) with differential temperature sensors used to measure atmospheric turbulence. There are also mathematical functions describing the C N 2 display style C underscore N caret 2 profile. Some are empirical fits from measured data and others attempt to incorporate elements of theory. One common model for continental land masses is known as Huffnagel Valley after two workers in this subject. <laughs> <laughs> Overcoming atmospheric seeing The first answer to this problem was speckle imaging, which allowed bright objects with simple morphology to be observed with diffraction-limited angular resolution. Later came NASA's Hubble Space Telescope, working outside the atmosphere and thus not having any seeing problems and allowing observations of faint targets for the first time although with poorer resolution than speckle observations of bright sources from ground-based telescopes because of Hubble's smaller telescope diameter. The highest resolution visible and infrared images currently come from imaging optical interferometers such as the Navy Prototype Optical Interferometer or Cambridge Optical Aperture Synthesis Telescope, but those can only be used on very bright stars. Starting in the 1990s, many telescopes have developed adaptive optics systems that partially solve the seeing problem. The best systems so far built, such as Sphere on the ESOVLT and GPI on the Gemini telescope, achieve a Strel ratio of 90% at a wavelength of 2.2 micrometers, but only within a very small region of the sky at a time. A wider field of view can be obtained by using multiple deformable mirrors conjugated to several atmospheric heights and measuring the vertical structure of the turbulence, in a technique known as multi-conjugate adaptive optics. Another cheaper technique, lucky imaging, has had good results on smaller telescopes. This idea dates back to pre-war naked eye observations of moments of good seeing, which were followed by observations of the planets on Cine film after World War II. The technique relies on the fact that every so often the effects of the atmosphere will be negligible, and hence by recording large numbers of images in real time, a lucky excellent image can be picked out. This happens more often when the number of R0 size patches over the telescope pupil is not too large, and the technique consequently breaks down for very large telescopes. It can nonetheless outperform adaptive optics in some cases and is accessible to amateurs. It does require very much longer observation times than adaptive optics for imaging faint targets, and is limited in its maximum resolution.
Topic. See also. Atmosphere and Telescope Simulator, a simulator of atmospheric turbulence Clear sky chart, web charts that include weather forecasts for astronomical seeing Mirage Planetary boundary layer Transient lunar phenomenon <laughs>